Hey, welcome back everybody. Kind of a disaster in here. This has been crazy busy the past few weeks. Uh, there's Jonathan's frame. I've got it uh, finished up. Got him some new bumperettes. His old ones were pretty messed up. Uh, frame rails are straight. Front bumper's on. I got him a new cross member. You can see his old one was just a mess. Um, we got that clutch and brake support in and uh, this is ready to go. Uh, I guess he's coming in the next week or so to come grab it. So there it is all finished and we've got some more things going on. I'll take you in the booth and then we'll take a look at the uh, snowblower Jeep out in the sun. Okay guys, we've got another frame hanging from the beam in the paint booth. This is nothing special, just a Model A rat rod frame. Got to get it in some hot rod black. And I just gave it a good wash down with some wax and grease remover. I don't know if you can still see the residue, but uh, that's drying right now. And we'll come in here, we'll give that a squirt in about an hour. And perfect day. Um, no humidity. Nice warm weather. So. There's that. And then if we look way over there, I had to take the snowblower Jeep out to get this frame done. And he's got it still sitting on the truck because we'll bring it back in tonight. But um, there it is. We'll go take a closer look. Okay, guys. Hoping you can see how nice this looks in the sun. I don't know what the camera's doing, but it uh, sure is shiny. I don't have the fenders on yet. Um, I, I'm still doing some some things under the in the engine compartment there, so I'm not ready to put those on yet. Um, but I did get the hood on, and it looks quite a bit different out here in the sun. We'll take a pop up there, see if we can see the depth of the gloss on the hood. Oh, shadows are getting me now. Uh, I use black for all my accessories, the hood hinges. Um, factory had the black windshields, and I carried the whole theme through. Um, I think it looks all right. But absolutely laid down perfect. Super happy with the paint, super happy with the SPI base, and uh, again, this is their Universal Clear, and it's coming along. So, that's the first look in the sun. Okay, there's Hal's engine in the bag. Uh, we've got the cam just laying in there. Uh, I took his tappets out. I'm not super happy with the tappets. I'm waiting on some other ones. Uh, cam gear, crank gear, and oil pump uh, are coming in. They were I had, I had a little bit of back order on those. They're coming in. I've got all the Gary stuff sitting right here. Uh, pistons are coming in for Gary. 80 overs, and uh, I don't like to bore without the pistons, so. Uh, when the pistons get here, we'll start boring Gary's engine, and um, hopefully it'll clean up at 80. Otherwise, we're gonna have to do some sleeving. Um, hopefully not. Hopefully it's gonna clean up at 80. But uh, I'll show you that as it happens. Okay, guys, back in the shop. What you're looking at are Hal's original pistons that I pulled out of that engine. They're in horrible shape. And the rings and rust are just terrible in there. And I got them off the rods. 
and house rods need to be resized so I'm gonna do house rods along with Gary's rods because um, Gary's are uh, the worst one is two and a half thousandths too big so just think about what that would do to your oil clearance and um, you would be hearing a rapping in no time now here are the bearing shells I'll try and get you in there look at the wear on that one that's number one this is number two look at the scoring on those there's number three and number four complete disaster um, like I say the rods are so far oversized um, this direction here like I say the worst one is two and a half thousand it's too big so we gotta cut the top and bottom get them squeezed down and then hold them back round again uh, they're all most of them are about two uh, number one or no number three uh, number three was two and a half thousandths oversized in this direction let's take a look at those pistons starting there you got number one two three and four look at those what do you think was going on there funny things happen when you got an F head cam and an L head so we got two with a lot of carbon on them and two perfectly clean uh, number three again uh, something in number three cylinder there that was uh, that was optional I guess for a top ring got your oil control your second ring but they don't have a top ring in there so they did okay on the other ones they put rings everywhere there but number three that must have been the optional cylinder for if the machinist that day felt like putting the top ring in so as we know we've seen this engine come apart it was never gonna last it was never gonna run and as we dig deeper we just keep finding things um, but I'm gonna set up I'm gonna get these rods resized and uh, we'll get busy with that and make sure we've got plenty of um, oil pressure by having the right clearances and uh, howls are still a bit dirty but after I after I resize them they go through the uh, the parts washer again anyway and always take a uh, like a welding tip cleaner or something and go through your oil squirt hole make sure that's real clean uh, you don't want any junk coming out of that after the the honing process
Hey guys, I'm just finishing up Hal's rods. Uh, his rods, I only had to take about a thousandth off. Uh, I took a thousandth off the top and bottom here. Um, Gary's took a lot more. I didn't start honing Gary's yet. I had to take about 4,000 off to get his round again. But we're just, we're just going to clean up the rest of Hal's. I like to flip it halfway through. Um, Gary's were really worn out much more than Hal's. Um, Gary's engine had been rebuilt before and they didn't resize them at that point either. But um, like I say, we're able to clean Hal's up pretty easy. And uh, see what this one, we'll see where this one's at. a hair more to go on this one. seems like a simple thing just making the big end round again but a lot of shops don't do this and I get a lot of questions guys are like hey my oil pressure is only about 5 psi and you lose a lot you lose a lot of oil pressure when your um, connecting rod clearance is too big See if you can see in there. Trying to zero in there. You can barely tell where the parting line is. And you can't even feel it. Um, and like I say, this is a, a simple thing that you want your uh, machine shop to do. 99% of the engines, these old Willys engines, uh, they need this. The rods are just so worn out. So just make sure. When you're talking with your machine shop, they're going to resize your rods. It's a uh, it's a critical part of every rebuild that I do, and um, it should be if you're talking to a machine shop, it should be high on their list of things to do for you. So just make sure you're going to get that uh, when you take your engine somewhere. Okay, guys, there's Hal's connecting rods resized. There's Gary's connecting rods resized. came out <coughs> excuse me they all came out right on the money and these will be perfect on the crank and we'll continue chipping away rebuilding both of these engines and I'll take you along and show you the process okay guys one more project to show you uh, I'm making some pieces for this already and this is a 1942 original Harley-Davidson sidecar and it's a little bit rusty the floor has got to be replaced but we're going on it just a little bit at a time I don't want to take too much of a part at once uh, we're getting some new sheet metal made this curved piece I made yesterday. So, anybody's interested in anything like that, I can show you the process. Uh, I don't think there's too many Harley guys uh, watching the channel, but uh, if you're interested in seeing it come together, just let me know. And uh, we're on the fab table in the trailer here, and it's making quite a mess. There's rust and dust everywhere so perfect place to be doing this away from the engines We've got some more sandblasting to do on some of these little bits that go inside but it's coming along okay guys we covered a lot of ground 
again today as usual uh, there is a lot of different projects here in the shop and trying to make progress on each of them daily so the videos might be a little mixed up but uh, trying to bring every project onto YouTube so people can see what's going on with their stuff uh, we're waiting on some pieces for these axles and I have Chuck's axles uh, coming apart now so uh, like I say there's a lot going on but if there's anything specific you need to see or want to see or anything just let me know and as always I appreciate everybody watching and uh, I'll catch you on the next video